I've got a, got another question from Doug. I don't know. I'm not. It's, this question reads: Are church organ registers also measured by the perceived frequencies or the mechanical cause of the sound? Thank you. I, I, I don't know much about church organs, but right. So I would assume that organ pipes are single, like they're single resonators that have one dominant frequency. The low, their, their lowest frequency would be their dominant frequency. So they have to have a different length pipe for each frequency. They can't have one pipe do all of the frequencies, which you do with other instruments where you change the length of the pipe by finger holes or you know holes in the thing. We have one tube that we can reshape to retune our, our resonances that we feature. So it's probably a little bit different in that regard. Again, not my specialty, but that's that's my simplistic understanding of that. Yeah. I love I love that description because I say that all the time. You know, we don't have a fixed shape instrument. You know, if the more if we're wanting to create a very constant sound, then we want to keep the shape of the instrument as consistent as possible. But we can we can jump from tuba to trumpet in an instant, right? So here's my my silly model if my thing will allow us to show it my, my um, vibrator creates a buzz of harmonics there's actually a little bit of a resonator right there because the vibrator is inside this tube so it even has a little bit of color there our laryngeal buzz is just a buzzy thing of harmonics put it in the resonator which is the tube i'll do it in front of me that way it stays in the picture this is a perfectly uniform tube. We don't have a perfectly uniform tube, as you know. But if I narrow the tube there, that's going to be an e-vowel because it's more like a narrowing near the front of my mouth with an open throat. And an a-vowel, counterintuitively, is a narrowing in the pharynx where the tongue has backed into the pharynx a little bit and the mouth is more open. So if I put that same set of harmonics in this tube and do this, you'll hear those two vowels. You know, I could do an E-A-R. We're just reshaping the tube. And what is that doing? It's moving those resonances around and choosing different harmonics that have different spectral tone colors. E -A -I, you know, the higher one. And the lower one is going, whoa. But we tend to hear it blended. So we hear those other colors. Yeah, that's super. Imp I think that is so uh, important to understand. Also, we get a little bit over over passionate about creating the perfect E vowel, right? Where whereas we're not going to necessarily because of the way we hear. If I'm constantly and I did this for a long time, going for that perfect E E E E, and it it took everything front. And just like you said, you mentioned the, this pharyngeal tuning, yep. and that's the best spot in the world to do an E. Yep. Nothing ever gets tight, but nobody told me that, you know, for 20 years. <laughs> you sing Maria, right? I've seen yeah. that. Just as an example, so my, my, my A vowel, my A resonance is higher than I sing, so I actually don't have to modify it. I don't, when I say I don't have to actively modify it, I don't have to change the shape. I'm going to hear a lot of ah uh in my high ah. Uh. But my E, if I sing Marie, I'm going to die. I have to sing Marie. 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 So my E has to be more open than my ah. Uh. Marie. Marie. I'm just doing it in falsetto, but in full voice, it'd be the same thing. Maria, Maria. Back work my mic a little bit. <laughs> Maria, re, re would die. Re, yeah. re, e, e, e. It's that sound. I, you know, I showed you how I tune that e. Air angel, e, e. That's the one that's going to work for that high E vowel. Yeah, and it sounds, I mean, to the listener, it sounds like a perfect E. Like e. Yeah, I, one of my uh, Australian coaches, he was a, you know, a wonderful lyric tenor on stage across Europe for about 40 years. But he, 
he would just he would just open his mouth and just do e a e and he was, it's all in the same place Philippe. it's all in the same place <laughs> you know, with a whisper for example open your mouth wide open uh, and if, as long as you know what pitches to tune for so if i do my e a a r e a a r As long as I know what pitches go with those vowel colors, and as long as I keep my my neck relaxed, feeling comfortable, I want it to feel soothing. Yeah. That E is going to sound like E to me. Well, I know we have um, we have one one singer, Erickson, uh, who does like to sing classical music. So I'll I'll give him a couple minutes and see if he wants to jump in. I know he's he's he would love to work with you. It's mm -hmm. it's just he's a little bit shy because he's always volunteering. <laughs> but I know it'll really help him because he does. Uh, you can find something Erickson. Um, classical if you want to and, and do some quick straw phonation or whatever you need to do to get yourself warmed up. We